for day 12 in the Psalms of Thanksgiving, the 21 days of prayer. And I just want you, before I get started and before I forget, uh, would you by all means please do me a favor and uh, share this link with uh, your friends, your family, uh, any groups that you are connected with. And if this has been a blessing to you, then share it so it will be a blessing to others as well. How are you doing? Let me know how you're doing out there. Uh, say hello. Uh, tell me where you're viewing from. Uh, what's, your, what's your day been like? How, uh, how, what are you looking forward to this weekend? I know last Friday I asked you pretty much the same thing, but you know, we're still going into a weekend, another weekend. Day is Friday, and we are one week closer to Thanksgiving. So tell me where you're viewing from. Tell me what your thoughts are, and what do you, what do you think about, and how, you, how have you been enjoying uh, these devotionals that have been shared with you? I mean, we've had some awesome hosts doing the devotionals. Uh, this week, we started out, of course, Minister Dez was Sunday. Uh, over the weekend, we had Minister Shelby, and then on Monday, Minister Adrian, and then Minister Tiana, Deacon Jarrett, and yesterday we had uh, Minister Siobhan. So tell me, tell me, what do you think about it? How, how have you uh, been able to relate to any of these? Because I don't know about the other hosts, but for me, seeing your feedback and your comments kind of helps me along because you know this thing is it's not just a revelation for me. This is just what God has shared with me. But uh, as you look at this and the passages of scripture that uh, that we are covering and that is being uh, used as part of the devotional. Uh, what does it speak to you? How, how, how does it speak to you? Tell me, what, what, what do you think? What, what are your thoughts, rather? Excuse me. Uh, you can tell I'm still a little bit nervous, but uh, I'm praying that God's going to channel this anxiety and this energy that I have uh, for his glory and that Something that I say, something that will be said, uh, will help someone. Uh, I want to send a shout out, of course, to uh, our senior pastor, uh, Pastor Ray. Thank him and the teaching team for this opportunity. I also want to be mindful of sending a shout out to my darling wife, who is always so supportive. And, you know, if I can depend on uh, one person, that would be her. Of course, our children as well. but. Uh, my wife, she's always got my back. I often hear, and of course, this being the week that we had Veterans Day, I've heard some of my veteran friends refer to close friends as foxhole buddies, you know, speaking in terms of this is somebody, if you were going to be in a fight, or somebody that you were going to be in a foxhole with, that's who they would choose to be. Well, my wife is that foxhole buddy for me. Uh, she is uh, some of the younger uh, ministers and so forth always refer to uh, their boo thing. Well, I don't think she would want me to say that, but she is certainly the sugar in my Kool-Aid. She's the straw that stirs my drink. So I thank God for Lady E. Elner McKnight. And I just want to uh, see what your comments are out there. If you're streaming, what are you, what are you doing? What's your week been like? What are you looking forward to this weekend? My wife and I talked about one thing that we're going to do. Uh, we're going to the drive-in one day here pretty soon. And that's something that we've kind of overlooked as far as our date night. But uh, we're going to go to the drive-in, sit up, and then we, can, we can be uh, socially distanced. We'll be in our own car, and we can bring our own popcorn and, you know, just sit back and enjoy the movie, have a good time. So... I hope, uh, hope everybody is doing well. hope everybody is continuing to uh, practice uh, COVID protocol because it's easy to get lax now that things are kind of opening up. But you have to understand that uh, the numbers are rising still. And Tarrant County is kind of overtaking Dallas County as far as the numbers of positive uh, tests that have come in. So please, by all means, be safe. And, you know, it's not just about us individually, but it's about the people that we're around. So think of them in, as well. 
You know, I want to be safe. I want to be mindful that, you know, I, I have somebody else's life and health at risk or at hand whenever uh, I'm around them or with them. And there have been more than one occasion that I've gotten out of my car and walked to the door and got there and said, oops, I forgot my mask. So I try to keep it clipped to my ear whenever I get in the car so that whenever I do get out and I go into a, an establishment of business or whatever the case, that I'll have my mask with me. So I've, I've had to do that turnaround and do it reverse and make sure that I, uh, I, uh, I have my mask. Make sure you have yours. Hello, Lady Wanda. Lady Wonderful, that's my nickname for her. She is, a, she is an awesome person. And she's always looking for something to do and always looking to help, too, as well. So I just want to thank you all. Uh, Minister Siobhan, Minister Tiana, Deacon Jason, Deacon Bob. Hello, all of you. Uh, Minister Shelby, thank you all. I appreciate everybody jumping on. I like to support. Kind of helps steady my nerves a little bit because, you know, I'm doing this now, but look at it like this. You know, the next time this comes up, you very well could be sitting here in this place because uh, Pastor Ray is, he's that kind of pastor. He's not all about him. He's, he's looking to give others opportunity as well to uh, to get out and show that, you know, God is not only working through him, but he's working through others, you know, as just like he is. So, Minister Ray Sean, how you doing? Minister Kendra, just want to thank you all. So, today, my devotional is dealing with seeds of gratitude. And whenever we think about seeds, we always think about planting, whether it's flowers, whether you're planting uh, a crop of maybe uh, food, potatoes, uh, onions, uh, whatever, whatever you're planting. You know, you're always looking for a good harvest whenever you plant something. Nobody plants anything, you know, with the expectation of nothing coming back or not having any kind of return. So today... I'm looking at seeds of gratitude, and this is how this has blessed my heart. Um, and it came from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse 11 is the verse that I'm going to focus on. And it reads, Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. So, as we look at this, uh, this is Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And in his second letter to the Corinthians, this happens or takes place about a year or so after his first letter. And he's addressing some other things this time. And here, from his first visit and the church that he established in Corinth, the Corinthian church, they were asked to uh, provide and help supply aid to the Christians in Jerusalem. And when they were asked to do so, their first instinct was, I mean, they were overjoyed. And they could not wait to provide or supply help and aid to the Jerusalem Christians and to that church in Jerusalem. And so with that said, Paul wanted to go again, I say this was uh, a year later, he wanted to encourage them and he wanted to remind them of their pledge. Now we know that whenever we make a pledge, you know, you, you, when my wife and I got married, and we stood at the altar and we made a pledge that we would honor God. We would be faithful. We would love, honor, and obey God's commandments. And that was our pledge. But the commitment doesn't come until we actually do something. We actually follow and live in those commitments, and live in that commitment and live in those commandments that God has, has told us. And I know a lot of people. You know, they get bent out of shape and say, no, I'm not going to love, honor, and obey no man. Well, it's not about the other person. It's about God. You know, God is the one that instituted marriage. And so when we offered to 
love, honor, and obey. It was love, honor, and obey God and to follow his commandments. And so this is what Paul is doing with the Corinthian church. He's asking and he's encouraging them to please, you know, you made this vow. You made this pledge that you were going to help the Christians and the church at Jerusalem. So now it's time for you to put up. And it's been a year, and you know how we are sometimes. Our interest kind of wanes. You know, we, we all enthused about, you know, making a pledge and, and doing what we're going to do. And if it happens right then, that's good. But if it's time rolls on and there's a little time in between when we make our pledge and the time that we actually have to ante up, then, you know, sometimes we kind of we kind of get a little disenchanted, you know. And at this time, you, we know that Paul... Uh, his, his, uh, his authority was being challenged. You know, some thought that, you know, he didn't have apostolic authority. And some felt like, you know, that uh, uh, Paul was uh, not being, uh, I guess, he's not being for real. You know, they didn't know if they could trust him because it had been a year. And they're still fairly new to this Christian life or this faith. And so, uh, Paul is writing to them to encourage them to get ready because we're going to come. And the other thing is, is that Paul wanted to remind them that, you know, we're reminded also that, you know, what we often say that people are always watching. Well, when Paul uh, encouraged the uh, Corinthians to uh, give like they had pledged to give, he wanted to remind them that, look, there were other people looking. There were other churches in Macedonia that saw them, and it actually stirred them and motivated them to give as well. Those churches in Philippi and Thessalonica and Berea, you know, they saw the enthusiasm that the Corinthians had, and they wanted to give as well. And it wasn't because they had so much to give that they just didn't, you know, they wanted to, they were looking for another write-off or anything like that. They, they were in distress themselves. They were impoverished. But because they were stirred by the Holy Spirit, they were able to give. And let me, let me, let me explain this. Uh, it doesn't matter how much money we have or what we have. You know, if, if God is not in it and if the Holy Spirit doesn't motivate us, we're not going to give. I don't care how much money you have. You know, uh, because you can look at the example of the lady, the widow in, in the story in, in Mark and in uh, Luke. Uh, she gave two mites. She didn't give of her abundance. She gave of her lack because she trusted God and she knew that God was going to take care of her. And just like I said about the churches in, in Macedonia, those churches in Philippi, Thessalonica, and Berea, you know, uh, they were encouraged to give because of the enthusiasm that uh, the Corinthians uh, had shown initially. And when our worship hosts are on the platform and they say, it's giving time. You know, if we just sit there and we don't respond, hey, the people that are watching, if we're in the worship center, if the people that are watching, how do you think they're going to feel? What do you think they're going to think, you know, about our giving? You know, are we doing it joyfully? Uh, do we have a joy? Do we have a cheerful heart about giving? What about those that are streaming? Uh, and, you know, and it just goes quiet. You know, it just hush, sucks all the air out of the room, you know, when you talk about giving. You know, a lot of times people say, hey, oh, they're just talking about money again. They're just talking about giving. Well, it's not about that. It's about being faithful. It's about trusting God. Because you know what? You can't have enough money. You look at the man that uh, the rich ruler who stored up all the, the grain in his barns, and he said, you know, now that I have all these things filled, you know, I'm just going to sit back and eat, drink, and be merry. Well, you know, the Bible says, you fool, you know, this day your life is going to be required of you. So we have, to, we have to understand that, you know, giving, you have to be motivated by the Holy Spirit to actually give. So uh, this is what Paul was encouraging them to do. And seeing in chapter 8 in uh, 2 Corinthians, Paul actually gave us an example, uh, a summary of what... Uh, uh, and teaching what giving is all about. You know, it's a grace. It's created by the Spirit. You know, the grace of God is the root and the author and the source and the fountain of everything good that is in us and all the good we do. You know, we don't do it just because we want to. We do it because we're motivated by the Holy Spirit. 
Christian giving is voluntary. You know, uh, nobody's going to hold a, a gun to your head and, you know, and we're not going to let you out of the worship center until you pay, you know, until you give us the money that we expect. You know, we're, trying, we're looking for a, a $5,000 donation and we're not going to let anybody out. No, it's not like that at all. Christian giving is voluntary. Uh, it's, it's a universal privilege. They often say here in the worship center, every time we have giving, is that everybody can participate in it. You know, it's not just, we may not be able to be a part of the production team. We may not be a part of the, I guess, the MSRs or our worship host. We may not be able to be a part of the security team, but everybody can participate in giving. And it doesn't matter how much you give, because the other thing that Paul emphasizes is that giving is proportioned to your income. So it's based upon what you have, not what you don't have. So nobody's asking you to go to the bank and, you know, and take something out of your 401k. No, no, no. You give what you have. You give what you purpose in your heart. You know, God wants you to do it freely and cheerfully. And then the other thing Paul emphasized that uh, there are rewards in, in Christian giving. You know, the reward in, in, in joy, uh, increased ability to give. And he, he emphasized that. As a matter of fact, in verse 11, the focus verse that I have uh, for this, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. When we give, we often talk about that song, you, you can't beat God's giving. The more you give, the more he gives to you. And so we just keep on, keep on giving, and God is going to replenish whatever we put out as far as our gifts. Um, as we, uh, we look at this, and then Paul is, is, is also telling them, you know, we should give ourselves to God. And see, that was the thing that the Macedonian churches did. They gave themselves to God first. And that made it easy because, you know, even in their impoverished state, they were in need themselves. You know, a lot of times, you know, when we're asked to do something, you say, well, you know, I have some needs myself, and, you know, I, I can't give because of this. But they weren't depending, and they weren't looking at what they had. They were looking at what God has, because God is the source. When we look at, uh, uh, when we give ourselves to God, then we can give him all that we have. You know, we can empty ourselves of, of self and have more of him, because every day we strive to be more and more uh, like God and less like ourselves or less like Billy Ray, if I will. And so, um, and whatever we give, we're only giving to God what he already owns. You know, uh, he, we're just stewards. And when we're as stewards, God has given us this to see how we're going to conduct ourselves. Are we going to be selfish? You know, God deliver me from you know, the pride of life, you know, and things like that, and to say that, you know, I'm all wrapped up in material things. And when we say, and you give, and, you know, may God return it to you 30-fold, 60-fold, 100 times what you've given, we have to stop treating God like a holy slot machine. That is not what it is about. Because look at it like this. Uh, a lot of times our return is not in our best interest if it's monetarily. You know, because uh, if God repays you and, and blesses you, it may be better for you to be blessed with time, health, a restored relationship. Things like that, money can't buy. And so, regardless, like I told you about the ruler who his bonds were stored up and he thought he was just going to eat, drink, and be happy and everything like that. Well, he had all the money and everything he needed, but he didn't have any more time. So... If you don't have time, all that money is just, it's just worthless. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't amount to anything. And because God is the one that made it available to you in the first place. Um, and what we give will only be a shallow gesture unless we give ourselves to the Lord. So um, I'm going to be short and brief tonight because basically... Uh, I don't want to over, overrun my time or take advantage of uh, uh, be, I guess, disrespectful to the other host. 
uh, because we all given uh, a, a certain amount of time, but I, I want to encourage you. And if it sounds like, you know, I'm, I'm begging, well, it's because I am. Uh, I'm not begging for your money, though. I'm begging for your faith. I'm asking that you would allow God to stretch your faith. Trust him. You know, whenever you give, ask God, you know, how much? What do you want me to do, God? How do you want me to, 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 to give? How do you want me to help sow into this kingdom? Uh, so uh, let's not treat God like a slot machine. Because after all, when we look at it and, and Minister Adrian on Monday and Minister Tiana on Tuesday, they told us, you know, Minister Adrian said that, you know, God, Moses told, God told Moses that uh, if the people ask you, tell them I am, you know, and, and in my mind, I'm saying, you know, hey, that's blank, fill in the blank, you know, whatever you need, I am, that's what I am, you know, I am sent me. And so uh, God gave us a blank check in Jesus Christ. You know, he went to the cross and he paid it all so that we might have a relationship with him. So with that blank check, we know that, like Minister Tiana said on Tuesday, you know, and she said in, in, in Lamentations 3, we have new mercy every day. So we take our bank card and every day we plug it in in the morning and we got, hey, look, Man, I got fresh new mercy this morning. I don't have to rely on yesterday's mercy. You know, I got a, I got a, I got a new slate. And so God is like that. His grace and his grace, his mercy, his love, it's all wrapped up in Jesus Christ. And Paul ends this chapter as far as uh, chapter 9 by saying, Thanks be unto God for, for his unspeakable gift. And... That unspeakable gift is not just the grace of God, like I mentioned. It's, it's, it's God giving us his son in love and grace and mercy. And we, we have that. And just like Paul wrote the Philippian church, and he told them, you know, when they gave of their lack, he told them, he said, my God shall supply all your needs. He can do this. I can, he can supply all your needs according to his riches in glory, not ours, you know, because our bank account will look kind of funny at times. But God, his, his source is never going to dry up. So that's, that's based on uh, what this scripture and this passage of scripture spoke to my heart as far as giving and sowing seeds of gratitude. The object of that gratitude, of course, nobody but God. So we need to show God the gratitude and expand our faith. Trust him. You know, if, uh, if, if, if there's an ask at church and they're asking for a certain amount, if the spirit doesn't speak to you to give that, then don't give it. Don't give it. And then turn around and get angry and say, well, I shouldn't have done that. And then when you get angry, then you say, well, they all live by the money, and so I'm going to move and go to another church. No, that ain't what it's about. You know, so uh, the Bible tells us here that God loves a cheerful giver. He said, purpose in your heart what you give. You know, go to him, ask him, what is it, God? Lead me in this endeavor. Show me what you want me to give. And then you won't have to vacillate and turn around and say, well, I gave more than I wanted to give because they asked me. No, he don't want, you, he don't want your angry money. And so uh, please, by all means, sow seeds of gratitude. Show God uh, gratitude, appreciation, and thanks for everything that he does. And as it purposed in your heart to give, so give. And that's all I have. And I want to thank you all for uh, being with me today, as far as I say with me, but uh, just, just listening in. And I hope I was able to share something with you that maybe that encouraged you. Uh, but it certainly was uh, a blessing to me to read through this and see, because what Paul learned as a result is that, you know, it the blessing that the Corinthians did as far as their enthusiasm, it, it blessed others as well. So their seeds was a blessing. And 
when those seeds get back to Jerusalem in the way, in the form of help that came from others, they're going to give glory to God. So the thing that we have to understand is that when we do that, you know, we give God glory and we give glory to the gospel as well. So that's all I have. Y'all have a great weekend. Oh, I forgot the announcements. Don't forget that we will not have a live devotional on Saturday or Sunday. But by all means, continue to track. Don't forget about Sunday service. You know, we'll be here Sunday, 10 o'clock. Don't forget about the pre-show and being there. We have some great hosts for the pre-show. Uh, Chris and Dolise Herman, they are the original host, and they set the bar pretty high. But we have others that, that, are, that are awesome as well. We have uh, uh, Lady Tiana and, and First Lady Tony Taylor, uh, TNT. And then we also have uh, Minister Tiana and, and Maya. Uh, they, they're awesome as well. And then we have the ecclesiastical dream team of uh, Minister Boyd and, and Minister Tiana. The BT Express, as I'll call them right now. So if you notice something about that, there's one person's name that is common. There's a common thread through all of that, and that is Minister Tiana. So, hey, if you feel like that's something that, you know, that it's in your spirit, Hey, take some of that load off of her because she only has about 1,200 things to do, and she just found out this year that she's a teacher as well, she and minister board. So uh, somebody else can step in there. Uh, we have to recognize Maya because she, she jumped in and right away, and, you know, there was no shame in her game. You know, hey, I'm ready. Here I am. Let me go. And she jumped in and did an awesome job, she and minister Tiana, uh, as the host in the pre-show. So don't forget about the pre-show at 9.45. Don't forget about service at 10 o'clock. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. Continue to be safe. Be well and live blessed. That's it.